Tulsi, I'd love to get you a reaction to Biden saying the MAGA crowd is the most extreme political organization that's existed in recent American history. Uh, let's start with Antifa, BLM, the group BLM. Uh, what do we want dead cops? What do we want them now? Well, you're a Democrat. How do you react to that? Because it's obviously ridiculous. It's worse than ridiculous, Sean. It is absolutely despicable and outrageous. When you look at the president of the United States of America calling millions of Americans essentially terrorists, people who politically opposed him or voted against him, he's calling them terrorists in an attempt to intimidate them into silence. And we know this is because we've heard this before from both him and his attorney general. You'll remember when, when his attorney general said, you know, anyone who holds extremist or anti-authority views will be targeted for investigation and potential prosecution by their domestic terrorist unit. So he's essentially saying that this quote-unquote MAGA crowd are worse than terrorists. Uh, this is outrageous. And, and so for every American who's watching, every American who's seen this, no matter how you feel about the MAGA crowd, this is an authoritarian assault on our freedom. And we need to stand together very strongly against this attempt to intimidate and silence anyone who holds political views that are different from or opposed to what this president and his administration are furthering. This is an assault on our democracy. I want your thoughts on on the rush to, to cling to this potential decision in the Supreme Court that would overrule Roe v. v Wade. Number one, Joe Biden supported uh, a constitutional amendment to get rid of it. Interesting. He's not been asked the question. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg pretty much saying and arguing what I had said all my career, which I thought it was bad law. It'll be returned to the states. Abortion is not going to be unavailable or illegal in America. So they're demagoguing that issue. I'm arguing the reason they're doing it is because they don't have anything else that they can run on and say, hey, we did this, this and this, and we're all, be all better off because of it. Am I wrong? Well, I think when you look at the different efforts to assault our freedom and democracy, it continuously points to the fact that they're afraid of the people. They're afraid of us. They're afraid of this question being put to the people through their state legislatures, for the people's voices to be heard. Uh, I think it's also critical to point out that uh, this leak sets a very, very dangerous precedent for our Supreme Court for three important reasons. Number one is, first of all, this person is a thief who stole this information, released it with the very specific intent to try to incite protesters and intimidate and pressure our Supreme Court justices to make a political decision rather than a decision that is based on the Constitution. Uh, number two, we have the fact that, um, you know, the Supreme Court is not in place to legislate from the bench. Uh, people's representatives at the state level, at the federal level, are charged to make laws, not the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court needs to make decisions uh, based on the Constitution. And the Department of Justice, lastly, needs to go and prosecute this uh, crime, which is exactly what it is, and make an example out of the person who leaked this information, because our Supreme Court justices cannot operate under the fear that they will have partisan political activists in their house uh, intimidating and threatening their ability to do their job per the Constitution. And there was a th uh, apparently J Justice Alito was supposed to give uh, remarks at an event and he had to cancel. Uh, and we know why. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard, always great to have you. Thank you for being with us.